Well, hello. Good to see you again. <laughs> I don't use clips. <clears throat> I don't use clips anymore, but I thought I'd just take my liberties and show that little clip there from Slim Potato Head because I don't think he'll copyright. I, please don't copyright strike me, Mr. Potato Head. Please. I just used uh, seven seconds, six seconds of your video. But, oh, come on, Dave. He's stealing my content. Uh, we wanted to, I'm looking forward to this video for Mr. Potato Head there, uh, Slim, uh, about the, uh, we wanted to see that little cabin he bought. That cabin he bought there, what is that, New Brunswick, Canada, east coast of Canada. He showed it to us a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, we got a quick look at it, and now he uh, is giving us a uh, grand tour of it and what he's planning to do and all this other stuff. And, yeah, he makes a lot of sense. You know, there were some of his friends who said, just tear the thing down and put something brand new up there. But the problem is right now it's really hard to get lumber. Lumber's expensive, and it's hard to get, and there's a lot of parts that are <clears throat> hard to get. <clears throat> I mean, parts. You know, construction materials, stuff like that. Everything's short supply, and it's going to be that way for a while. So Slim has decided to just sit back, take his time, and just, you know, gradually upgrade the cabin there and, and do whatever he needs to do. So it's got, it's got land there on a lake, and it's really cool. And, uh, you know, anyway, so you watch this video. Go watch this video and you can learn all the different things about yeah look at that the roof there needs a little bit of work got a tarp for it so uh, you know when it rain you know it does rain there in beautiful British Columbia and when it does uh, I guess uh, you get wet right so you know so that's right anyway here is the lake there and uh, yeah it looks like a cool project uh, little, a little fixer-upper don't you think I think he said something like the house hadn't been occupied since 94 or something. Or It's been a while. It's been over 20 years, 25 years. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been sitting there kind of just rotting away. But it is, uh, it could be a beautiful, beautiful area there. You get some uh, work done in the backyard, get the house fixed up. And, uh, you know, and it's going to take a while, right? But what's the rush? Only R is the, uh, is the equipment, is the... Um, Construction equipment hard to get. Construction materials hard to get. There's contractors are not available right now either. So that's a big shortage. Do you know there's a shortage of contractors? So he's hoping that within a year, by a year from now, maybe uh, the uh, early fall, late summer of 2022, if he can get it habitable, habitable, so that he can actually move in there and live there comfortably, that's his goal. So, uh, all our best to Mr. Potato Head. There be bars. There be bars near the camp there. We got gone again there. Hanging out in Colorado. Here at Noises in the Woods. Uh, <laughs> a bear prowling near the camp. That, that's exciting. Excitement, huh? Right, so, anyway, they're going to uh, turn in and uh, take a nice evening nap. Nice night nap. A nice night sleep. And hope no bears come prowling around. But uh, they, um, they, they've seen them out there. They're out there. Oh yes. Oh no. Oh no. We gotta enjoy the journey life there. Enjoy the journey life. <laughs> Leaks. Leaks under the vehicle. There's RV flooded. What's next? Holy cow. That means you gotta crawl under there and find out what the heck's leaking. Oh, and this is something we were talking about just the other day about RV problems this time. You buy these new vehicles, and as they're talking about here, that, uh, I was gonna say John and Mercedes. No, I forget their names, but they're, they're nice people. Anyway, uh, wrong, wrong couple, Dave. Uh, vehicles that, parts on your vehicle that are supposed to last a long time don't. They're putting cheap crap in there. They're not building stuff well now. Uh, they've had, you know, we've just reported on that, that a lot of these uh, RV manufacturers, particularly in Indiana there, are, um, They've got, uh, you know, substandard parts and substandard workers. I mean, not they're not substandard workers. They're just workers who are constantly changing and taking other jobs and not being trained properly. And they're not knowing what they're doing. And, and so what's happening now is there's a whole crop of uh, vehicles that are just um, not very good. That little part, that one little part caused a big leak that messed up a lot of other things. So it is the little things that count. You know, little part, big leak. Wow. 
All right, the joys of owning a nice RV in 2021, the pandemic year. Oh my. Tom and Sherry, Tom and Sherry, Tom and Sherry, not Mercedes and John. Enjoy the journey life. Be oddly compelling, but they're not the odd couple. Hey, let's do some letters, shall we? Uh, it is the 13th of uh, September, 2021, Monday. Uh, Phil, PHL4728 says, Dave, there are so many people displaced back east. They sold everything, bought a van, and came out west to live for the nomad life. The parks and the mountains are becoming the new homeless shelters for the people who can't afford living in the cities anymore or maybe due to the Delta variant. Oh, we've had more foul play because of it. Worst I've seen this summer. I don't know. Again, I am covering a lot of these. A lot of you guys are sending me news clips, uh, you know, of um, really horrible stuff that's going on in a lot of these parks. People, um, you know, not, bad things happen. Let's just say bad things happening to people in a lot of parks. They're going missing. They're passing away. A whole lot of nasty things. Again, is it just we got better coverage today and all this stuff is getting reported? Or is it actually a being, is, is all this nasty stuff in the parks and out west and wherever in, you know, is it getting worse? Is it getting worse? It would seem so from what we hear on the news wires and stuff, but um, I don't know, man. And C says, I would never buy an RV, be it a Class A or a Class B or C. All the wood inside is probably more likely, uh, is more than likely particle board MDF with laminated fake wood wallpaper on it. That stuff gets wet. If that stuff gets wet, it starts to come apart and crumble. I would sooner go buy a used school bus and remove all the seats and make my own RV, you know? They do say also that school, schoolies and stuff are actually safe for vehicles considerably because they're made to carry, you know, kids to school and they have safety standards. Whereas a lot of these RVs, once you get outside the little passenger compartment in the front there, you know, if you're in an accident, you know, man, they just literally rip apart. It's scary. Uh, Warren Weisfuss says spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on a poorly constructed RV, which breaks down out in the middle of nowhere and you are stranded at the mercy of the grizzlies, timber wolves, and disease-carrying mosquitoes. Hey, let's go camping! <laughs> And we're talking a lot about junky RVs because we did a story the other day about how, you know, you're paying top dollar for these RVs now and they're not made very well. Alina Woodrow says, Hubby and I bought the top of the line Grand Design image based on Less Junk More Journeys reviews. Okay, um, Nate and uh, Marissa there. We paid a premium for a brand new RV. Uh, uh, and uh, the evening of the first trip, the flashing underneath was dragging down the road. Our RV was literally flooding because one of the pipes wasn't properly connected. We've had so many issues with the quality. Fortunately, my hubby loves to MacGyver everything, so he's handy. Otherwise, we'd have a very expensive RV that would be completely unusable. We were told by the dealer that the next RV model we wanted would take at least a year and a half to come in. So we are definitely felt pressured to buy, but now we have a 25-year mortgage on an RV that is questionably built. Yeah, it's a bad time to buy RVs right now. It's, there are shortages. The parts are hard to get for. The repairs are hard to get. Uh, the vehicles aren't made very well, and they're very expensive. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to choose one of those, you got to wait a year and a half for the new models to come in. And what do you do? Get an old schoolie and rip out the seats. East Coast GS says, I purchased a 2020 Coachman in May of 2020 from Lazy Days in Florida. The trailer is a POS and they won't honor, honor the warranty. They're crap out. L-I-A-R-S, very dissatisfied. Ain Halliday says, RV manufacturing has never been good and now it's even worse. Not like they're expensive. Yeah, I used to inspect manufacturers the manufacturers in Indiana for the state. They were destroyers then, and I can't imagine them being even worse. Pathetic. Uh, Squirrel Bay Parodies. Again, we're getting message after message after message, comment after comment here about people buying junky RVs, so it's confirming those news articles we're seeing about the quality of RVs right now being really bad, the new ones. Squirrel Bait Parody says, this is a refreshing topic. I watched a video a few years back and how they put together a Jayco trailer in seven hours shift, in one seven hour shift. It was slapped together as you could, as you would guess. And uh, you know, do you want to live in one of these things full time? Yeah, wow, wow. 
All right, wow. Finally, Dunsey says, being someone who was in the RV business in Elkhart, Indiana, they have always built crap and the quality control was always with the dealer. Slap them together, ship them out, and let the consumer find the problems and let the dealer fix them. Wow. All right, everybody, that ought to do it for a Monday Letters and More video. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your week. It's a brand new week. Ah, oh, yes, and fall is a coming. Thanks for watching. Vlog Under.